This is just a sample of the audiobook. To get the complete audiobook access the link posted in the first comment. In the second half of the 20th century, the guitar became America's instrument. In the hands of innovators like Les Paul, Charlie Christian, Merle Travis, Jimi Hendrix, and a host of other players, the instrument helped define, and was in turn defined by, America's music. Country, blues, jazz, and rock in all its varieties. These players and their music did not develop in a vacuum. They had predecessors, they were heirs to traditions, and if we do our homework or our fieldwork, we can find their roots, discovering stylistic bloodlines. In Maybelle Carter's Wildwood Flower, we hear the hillbilly roots of honky-tonk, country and western, and Chet Atkins' popularized Nashville sound. In Robert Johnson's plaintive singing and playing, we hear B.B. King, Buddy Guy, and a multitude of other blues men and women. In the bluesy jazz lines of Eddie Lang or Lonnie Johnson, we hear premonitions of the steady work of Freddie Green with Count Basie or Barney Kessel in the studio, as well as the sophisticated jazz stylings of Wes Montgomery, Joe Pass, Jim Hall, and others. None of these musical examples really surprises us. Each makes sense, musically and historically, in light of what we know followed. This history of the guitar in America is really a documentation of musical genres, a history built principally on recorded performance. The guitar's ubiquitous use in America's recorded popular music has dictated how its players and fans understand its origins and its story. Contemporary players and fans look to the past for the roots of their own music, tracing the guitar's stylistic history in this country backward from the most recent performances on CDs or MP3 files to its earliest manifestations on LPs, 78s, or cylinders. In this telling, the guitar's recorded sounds echo the various musical dialects of America's popular musics. And the histories of the guitar based on these recordings has consistently described the instrument as a tool of the folk, its repertoire and oral tradition, its heroes and heroines unschooled troubadours who used their instruments, as Woody Guthrie used his, to fight fascism, as well as racism, sexism, colonialism, and commercialism. In this history, the guitar, an equal opportunity instrument, was a social and cultural leveler. Until recently, guitar fans, and even some scholars, consistently projected such a late 20th century interpretation of the guitar's place and role back into the 19th century. They often glossed over the years before the 1920s, assuming that the 19th century guitar functioned as the steel string acoustic guitar, that is, the non-electric guitar, did in the late 20th century. In this view, the guitar has always been an instrument of the folk in America, its music transmitted orally, its function to accompany folk songs, its associations primarily with blues playing blacks, rural string bands, and cowboys. This anachronistic view regularly projects late 20th century approaches to the instrument, including steel stringing, a plectrum technique, and a lack of formal notation, among others, onto earlier players and their repertoire. The advent of the electric guitar in the late 1920s and early 1930s established the direction of the instrument in this country for the rest of the century. As significantly, the electric guitar assumed an iconic role in American musical culture, Steve Waxman's recent study of the electric guitar reflects this approach, drawing on Jacques Attali's work to interpret the instrument as a tool of the cultural outsider whose noise challenges the status quo. In this story of the guitar in America, informal and accessible performance trumps formal and elite concerts, oral transmission negates standardized notation and loose, improvised structures dominate formally composed works.